<coughs> Rain World. A game built upon the idea of a world that was not made for the player. I've clocked in at 60 or so hours in this game, and I have all the achievements. I've also spent a lot of time reading the wiki up and down, so I basically have a doctorate in this game's lore. <laughs> From all this time that I've spent in this game's world, I've developed a small list of gripes and feedback that I have with this game. And if I had the choice to ask the devs two things from that list, it would be, what were you on when you wrote the lore, and where can I get some? So if you couldn't tell from the presumably blunt title, this video is going to be a short, relatively easy to digest summary on the broken ramblings of a madman they call a story director at Video Cult. Alright, let's get into it. Without a doubt, the most obvious part of Rain World's lore at first glance involves the environments that you're crawling through. They aren't quite hills or mountains, they're buildings. Metal pipes and old rebar are used as movement tools, and the areas have names like industrial complex or drainage system. I don't think the fucking lizards built that shit. No. They were built by a race of beings known as the Ancients. They were intelligent, and, in lore, a bunch of dicks. They were such dicks that they decided to name themselves things like Eight Suns, Countless Leaves, or Seventeen Axes, Fifteen Spoked Wheel, just to make it more difficult for me. However, something weighed on them, besides their horrible naming structure. You see, dying and restarting in Rain World isn't just a video game mechanic. No, 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 no. Rain World joins games like Dark Souls and Undertale in the New Age phenomenon of video games where checkpoints are based in lore. You see, in the world of Rain World, there's this thing called cycles, and it's really hard to find out what they actually are, because the lore of this game was written by a spider monkey with a keyboard who was just fed 200 cc's of LSD and was in the middle of his death throes. Anyways, from what I've read, and from what I believe, a cycle could mean two things both as a measurement of time, similar to days or weeks, and in reference to the Great Cycle. Now, the Great Cycle is something different. The Great Cycle is like a ring. Hell, the wiki itself says as follows. Birth, death, and rebirth were connected to each other like a ring, and try as they might, none could truly die. Death would simply result in a new awakening, a restart, or a repeat. Wow, I wonder what that feels like. Hopefully that makes sense, because that's all the explanation that we get. Anyways. So, the Ancients also had to deal with these cycles. Anytime that you would want to die, like, for example, anytime you opened Twitter, you just couldn't. You'd wake up again. It sucked. It was horrible. In Rain World, all beings are technically immortal. Except, instead of never being able to die, it's dying constantly and just waking up the next day like you took a nap. So, anyways, these Ancients decided to try and find a way to die permanently. This process was called Transcendence, and the search for eternal death. This is going to be a theme that shows up a lot. This fervent desire to go ghost led the ancients to pull some real whack shit. They tried to rid themselves of all natural urges, usually by attempting to starve themselves on herbal tea and gravel. They believed that if they could rid themselves of all things that tied a being to life, like for example hunger and thirst, they could properly stop living permanently. Of course none of these worked, but the search for transcendence transformed the society of the ancients into one primarily driven by spirituality. They expanded and expanded until eventually they found something unique when they were digging. A pool of goop! It's actually called void fluid, and not really a pool either, it's more like an endless ocean of goop. Through an unexplained method, the ancients discovered that this pool of Mountain Dew Baja Blast was able to melt through anything, just like regular Mountain Dew Baja Blast. Most interestingly, of course, is that anyone who got slimed and melted into stew wouldn't come back. They were dead for good. Of course, having literally found the one thing that they searched for all this time, the ancients began tossing themselves in one by one. Soon enough, after the invention of drills and a filtration system, void fluid became available to the masses. Hey there, my fellow ancients. Do you want to die? Yeah, of course you do. We all do. That's like what our entire civilization has been built on for God knows how long. Well, do I have news for you. We found a cool-ass fluid that can melt us into schlop. And it kills us for good. Wow, right? We have finally found a way to harvest it through a special whack-ass drills and ship it right to your homes. Now you can die for the low, low price of... Unspecified price. 
The dream is finally real. Time to actually transcend. None of that, like, pseudo-Buddhist shit that we've been doing all these years. Anyway, that's all from me. 18 bulls of dicks, shining semen. See you never. Yeah, basically that. As more and more of the ancients melted themselves, we inevitably end up with, like, the Elon Musk or Beth Jezos of the ancients throwing himself in. He died, yeah. But he also didn't really die. He stayed behind fractured between life and death because his earthly desires were too strong. Soon enough, more and more rich people threw themselves in and suffered the same fate. Exactly six of them, as a matter of fact. These would be the echoes that you meet across the game world. The other rich people saw this and were like, Nah, not me, not a fan, not gonna turn into a space octopus. And soon enough, void baths were deemed too dangerous and were severely limited. It got to the point where those old transcendence rituals were happening again, eating gravel and all that. But the goal was different. Now it was not to rid yourself of all earthly desires. It was to attain a jellyfish-like, effortless state. The idea was that when a jellyfish is caught in a fishing net, he simply passes right through. Which isn't true, but it's what they believed. So, what do you do when you want to transcend, but you're scared of eternal purgatory between life and death? We all have this problem, but how do you solve it? This great problem. Well, of course, you build a big-ass robot. Yeah, just build a giant fuck-off robot. They did that, and they built a lot of them. They were called the Iterators, or the Iterators, or whatever, designed to make hundreds of thousands of calculations at blinding speeds to find an alternative to the void fluid, or find a way to truly ensure that you don't become something Lovecraft thinks about before he goes to bed. There are four notable ones that we're going to talk about. Sliver of Straw, No Significant Harassment, Five Pebbles, and Looks to the Moon. Now see, the Iterators were fucking huge to the point where a single one was considered a superstructure, big enough to store a city on top of. They were so massive that they poked over the cloud layer, you can see them in-game in the background. The guts of this massive robot required literally oceans of water as coolant. They could eat your mother out and still be thirsty. Of course, with all that water coming in, means a lot of steam pumping out. The Iterators blew fat clouds to such an extent that a permanent overcast settled around their ventilation ducts, and eventually over the entire area. That steam would cool down though, as most things do, and came back to the surface as rain. Lots of rain. The rain became more powerful as more iterators were built, slamming the ground with the force of a thousand tiny bullets and drowning or crushing anything that couldn't escape or hide from it. This rain molded the ecosystem, and the ancients evidently needed to move out of the strike zone. So they moved to the next best alternative, on top of the iterators themselves. They made gigantic cities, placing them on top of these superstructures, and lived in essentially utopic boredom. Anytime they had a problem, they just asked their resident, notably unimpressed supercalculator god, and they would fix it, or at least give a solution. While the ancients lived out their happy, utopic lives, those very same resident supercalculator gods chugged away at the great problem. They tried and failed countless times. With that being their only purpose in life, the iterators would attempt to solve this great problem until it didn't even matter anymore. Soon enough, likely through the void baths or a pilgrimage of their own to the depths, all the ancients petered out until only the wildlife and iterators remained, having to now solve a problem which didn't even matter. It's also quite important to mention that because the ancients were, as a matter of fact, a bunch of dicks, the iterators had a buffer installed, which meant that they could not self-terminate under any circumstances without finding a very good loophole meaning that they were stuck there until they rotted away, which would take quite a while. Intermission where a bunch of time passes and nothing happens. Alright, so the iterators have basically given up. 
As a matter of fact, they've taken to using the withering Sky Islands communication towers to form a sort of impromptu Discord. I'm not joking. They just made Discord, complete with spammers and DMs and servers. So while they're all chilling, and in Five Pebbles is probably banning people for posting memes in general or something, Sliver of Straw just fucking dies. She says, hey guys, I did it, and then falls over. Just dead. Now to all the very notably suicidal iterators at that point who were unable to die because the ancients were dicks, this was big news. Sliver of Straw had found a way to ascend, which was deemed impossible to do beforehand, at least for the iterators. This led the Discord server to enter into two different major factions, Sliverists and Anti-Sliverists. And that's all we hear about this. The only major plot point that comes from this is that our resident Discord moderator, Five Pebbles, went to undercover and joined a lot of Sliverist groups. After spending time in those groups under his new alias, Erratic Pulse, Five Pebbles had officially become red-pilled. This led him to do the most based thing possible, and to almost kill his neighbor to get some extra water. Alright, 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 let's take a step back and explain this a little bit better. Five Pebbles and his neighbor, Looks to the Moon, were both early iterators. Built next to one another, they shared groundwater. All good and cool, no water issues there for the most part. However, when Five Pebbles got red-pilled, he began to run hundreds of thousands of parallel processes at the same time, trying to create a genetic organism that would consume him, allowing him to effectively self-terminate. However, running so many parallel processes at one point led him to just need fuck tons of water. And he took this from the groundwater that he shared with Moon. This led to Moon having no water, leading to her basically just overheating for an untold amount of cycles. Moon was dying fast and needed Pebbles to stop what he was doing and return her water. However, Five Pebbles, a true Discord admin, ghosted her ass and everybody else who wanted to talk about the problem. This led Moon to activate the super secret technique of sliding into his DMs and interrupting his dutiful bio-gunk creation. She did so at the worst possible time, officially fucking everything sideways and leading to the creation of an organism known as the Rot, or the Daddy Long Legs in game. This genetic organism began to grow and consume entire sections of the Five Pebbles superstructure, before he dumped them all out into the garbage wastes. However, that was unsuccessful in removing all the organisms, and now a so-called unfortunate development spreads through Five Pebbles. Moon, having caused this problem, was subsequently ghosted even harder and eventually shut down, her superstructure collapsing and causing her to go dormant due to massive hardware damage. With the collapse of Moon and the creation of the Rot, we find ourselves finally starting the game. I know, right? So we have a lot of plot elements. A collapsed iterator, a red-pilled Discord admin iterator who is rotting from the inside out, a collapsed civilization bent on ending itself, crushing rains that hammer the landscape at the end of every cycle, and also the space octopi that are still just hanging around. Right, let's get into the game events now. In Rainworld, you play as a slug cat, which is a mixture between two animals, only scholars can tell which two, that was genetically designed to crawl through pipes and clean them out. Despite this rather mundane purpose, slug cats seem to have a rather high degree of intelligence, evidently being able to use a wide array of tools and items similar to other intelligent entities, such as the ape-like scavengers. One iterator, no significant harassment, who up until now has just been little more than a semi-active member of the Discord server, decided to go against her name and meddle quite a bit. Upon noticing Moon's complete inactivity, she created a slug cat designed to brave the harsh wastes and gave it two things, a device designed to reactivate Moon and a pearl, which is a type of information storage device containing a message to Moon, basically telling her what I just told you. Oh yeah, and the graceful creator of this organism also gave it turbo cancer. It doesn't actually have a name. This little bastard, the hunter, has one task to fulfill and will die for good in just about 19 cycles. Well honestly, the nature of the hunter's turbo cancer is sort of weird because it ends the playthrough when you die after cycle 19, but also can't things like not die permanently unless they ascend? 
Anyways, long story short, this little red dude run jumps and climbs literally all the way across the map from Farmer Rays to Shoreline. Once he finds Moon, whose whole body has fallen over and is about half sunken in the ocean now, he gives her the device to reactivate her and the message from No Significant Harassment. If he has enough cycles left, he will then proceed to go to a resident Discord admin and or uh, around six resident space octopi. His meetings with these creatures should allow him to be able to access the depths which is where the original Void Sea is located. Once he heads down there, he will hop into the Void Sea, and then we don't really know what happens. Some, like, ink comes out of him, and then an iterator, either Sliver of Straw or No Significant Harassment, just, like, appears. Yeah, nobody really knows what that's supposed to mean, but, you know, it's probably important. After Hunter does his thing and either dies of his turbo cancer or takes a dip and ascends, the survivor, a normal white slug cat, gets separated from his family during one of the heavy rainfalls. He gets washed down through a pit and then has to survive on his own, attempting to find his family again. On an average regression route, he will be following the little dudes known as overseers, which just sort of zoop in and out of the walls. The first one is Iggy, uh, don't ask me how he got that name, who leads you to Moon, who is barely alive at this point. Forced to drown on the regular and living in only a few brain cells, quite literally. Survivor would then climb up the leg of the Five Pebbles superstructure and then visit Five Pebbles himself, who would grant him the mark of communication, allowing him to understand ancient language. Five Pebbles, now being able to speak to the Survivor, would proceed to project hard, assuming that the actual wild animal sitting on the floor of his chamber would be really interesting in ascending to a higher plane of existence. Luckily for him, he was right, and the Survivor finds the idea of taking a long dip in turbo acid a totally tubular idea. Five Pebbles gives him the ability to access the depths, and over the course of the survivor's adventure, he has plenty of time before taking a dip in the eternal jacuzzi. He can pass the time by collecting colored lore pearls and pestering Moon to read them, talking to space octopi and befriending local wildlife. Eventually though, the survivor would travel down into the depths and take a dive into the void sea, meeting up with lots of fucky abominations on his way down to Transcendence. Now that that little dude is out of the way, the last events of the Rain World timeline so far come in the form of the easy mode, the monk, the brother of the survivor who decides to follow his brother and attempt to reunite with him. At this point, both iterators are quite tired of slug cats and all the pearls that would normally have super cool lore messages have all faded and are only for the scavengers now. The monk follows the same path as his brother and eventually finds himself reuniting with him in the void sea alongside all the titanic worms and such. Thus ends my summary on the story and lore of Rain World. As much as I've ragged on this game, I honestly love it to death. The storytelling, while whack as shit in execution, is so cool in concept, and Video Cult did a fantastic job with every part of this game. Besides the daddy long legs. I just. My favorite part of the entire game is without a doubt the music. While the gameplay and the procedural animation is fucking incredible, the music just helps to accentuate every single part of the game just that little bit more. And I should note, all of this story is in the background. It's something that you have to seek out, something that's there but only barely noticeable on the first playthrough. You could just play through this whole game without ever talking to Pebbles or Moon and ascend it through pure coincidence. You could play this game as a wild animal just doing stuff out of curiosity and survival instinct. Or you could play it as a lore master trying to find every buried secret. That choice makes your playthrough feel unique. Your engagement to the story is entirely your own. Anyways, I've been talking for too long. Play the game. It's good.